Good afternoon. Time for another fun chat. Um, today we're going to talk about ladies. You're a strong, powerful woman in public, but who are you in private? And I'll explain what I mean and also you probably already figure out what I'm going to talk about. But before I do all of that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. My name is Barry Selby. Ta-da! Surprise! <laughs> I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert and author of the best-selling book 50 ways to love your lover a book for singles and couples men and women which i highly recommend because i'm the author of it and i'm biased about it um, i help women create balance in love life and business because i'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine which informs my work with women and why i stand for this and also i started these talks almost three years ago called messages for the masculine inspiring your feminine heart today was for episode number 881 that's a lot of talks i know and i'm going to tell you where you can find the replays at the end of the broadcast so you can catch up on all the talks you missed. So um, before we get started, let me just say that I have a bias. And that is I love women owning their feminine magnificence. So what I'm framing here is that I'm not attacking one or the other. I'm actually speaking about how I support women owning that period. Now, as part of that, I've become very aware and I've dated women like this, so I know from experience, there are a lot of women out there who are like dynamic and strong and powerful out in the business world, out in the world in general, who really, really make a difference and really stand in a powerful place of impact, which is great. However, a lot of these women who do that, when they get home, either are the same as they were out in the world, which isn't a recommended way of being, or have another perspective, which is one of a place of loneliness and being somewhat um, a shut-in type energy, where they close up, close in, and don't express themselves um, any differently and it's kind of tied to the same thing is that a lot of women have been trained or in trained or programmed or hypnotized to act a certain way to succeed and unfortunately for other women they carry that everywhere they go whether it's in public or private I'll get to the reason why this so I'll give to get to a better option in a moment just to see, look to see if there's anything else I want to speak to on this plane because this is a I don't say a disease, but it's certainly a theme that's carried wide and far and wide in the business world. So many women have been, um, as I said, trained, hypnotized, programmed to believe that they have to be strong and dynamic to be successful in the business world. And I talked about this before as being a, a challenge because the business world was not created for them. It was created for men, by men. But we've been trying to fit in ever since. And there's a discrepancy we have still haven't resolved. We're getting closer to it, but we haven't resolved it yet. So many women are out in the business world, out and successful, being in the world externally, expressing out in, the, out in life, have had to basically mimic what men have done. And part of that is that women have had a hard time of being able to succeed as they are naturally as feminine women. So they put on this, but this mask to wear when they do it. The other part is that women have now started to learn how to take charge in life in their very feminine way, which is also very powerful and dynamic as well. Except it's not. I'll be careful how I say this, because I'm gonna, I know I'm going to get in trouble if I don't say it the right way. So <laughs> let me just carefully see where my steps are going to land. Many women I know are dynamic forces of nature getting things done. They're, they're, they, you, they are creating transformation, they're making a difference, they're impacting the world, and they're learning how to do things that are frankly not by nature their natural style. They are in fact doing these things in the world in a very mechanistic way, because it's the way it has to be done, because the way the world is set up currently is that things are done in a, in a in, well I'll say in a mechanistic way, which is by the way the men function, the way we, we as men are naturally biased and built. The, ta the challenge is that your strength, ladies, for most women, not all women, but for most women, lies in a much more fluid way, the less mechanical, less fluid, which is the feminine. Frankly, that energy is more powerful than the masculine. In fact, the way I'd put it, because a friend of mine, I don't remember it wasn't, a friend of mine posted this response to something I posted that was so eloquent and poetic, I had to, I had to remember it. And she said, basically, imagine that the feminine especially when the feminine is an upset, which is another talk entirely. If you imagine a rocky coastline with crags and rocks and, and, and along the way, women, sorry, the, the ocean, I'm jumping ahead of myself, the ocean is beating against those rocks 
Sometimes it's lapping against them gently. Sometimes it's going against them full, full force, banging against rocks, putting up spray and and, rock, and, and disruption and everything else. The rocks don't change though. They may get wet, but they don't change. In this scenario, uh, using this metaphor, the masculine is the rocks, the feminine is the ocean. Both powerful, both strong, both tireless, but they're very different energies. Masculine is very stoic, very strong, very static, and very um, present in its presence. The feminine energy has got the force of nature behind it, being incredibly potent and powerful. Now, you may have noticed, ladies, in the business world, that may not fit very well, because you steamroll a lot of people who don't understand how to stand their masculine. And this is another part, by the way, of the business world. It is created by men for men. Women have been trying to fit in ever since. However, the business world has generally, spoke, generally speaking, not been a masculine world, though. Most of the men in business, most of the men in the world, have been, a, have been, hmm, hmm, do you want to say lacking? No, I don't want to say lacking. This is the challenge of stuff is coming through the way it comes through, and I'm attempting to language in a way that is more um, polite. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So a lot of women are, excuse me, a lot of men have basically learned to live in the world as a take-all culture. Mine, not yours. I'm winning, you lose. That's the way it works which is unfortunately what this business world was, was established on. And it's part of the problems with um, unconscious capitalism, I'll put it that way. So men have basically learned habits that have been not healthy and they're not being in the masculine to do it and they're just getting things done. Women have had to copy that to be in the same place so they're also not in the feminine. This is a disruption. So when I say women, you're out in the world being dynamic, very powerful, which is great, except you're not shifting into your feminine power magnificence, as I mentioned. Secondarily, in your personal life, in the private life of many women, because they go out and they're actually putting on a shell or a, a mask or a, t or a covering to fit into the business world when they come home, they're stuck to that mask. They're stuck to that shell. They can't take it off. They don't know how to remove it and come back to themselves, partly. And secondly, when they do take it off, they don't know what else is there for them because they're so trained in that way of being, they've forgotten how to be feminine. Many women, unfortunately, weren't raised with understanding what feminine was. They thought it was being weak because that's the way some people think of it, which is inaccurate. So in this dance, in this in this pattern of business and life, business, public and private, how does that impact relationships? A good question you may be thinking. When neither party, male or female, I'm talking about straight relationships in this paradigm just for the sake of argument, and also masculine and feminine overlaying men and male and female, generally speaking. So men, male, masculine, Woman, female, feminine. That's kind of the way I'm layering it right now, just to give it context. For most dating relationships, neither partner is authentic. And that messed everything up. So even though this is about tied towards women, there's men that can get benefit from this too, because men, frankly, have room to grow and hold a different space than they've been trained by our culture. Now, I'm not, and again, I'm not blaming people, but I'm aware that we've been making mistakes. I made plenty of them. I've made plenty of them over the last 20, 30 years. More than that. I'm not going to say how many. So in my work and in my coaching, a lot of what I'm doing is helping mostly women, but some men who will listen to, reframe and, re and realign their values, their strength, their truth to who they really are. Because they didn't know how to get there before. In my own work as a coach, as a guide, as a facilitator, my focus is on two things. One is to hold the space in my masculine because now I know what it is and now I've, uh, I own it and live in it and express it more and more in the world. But also to honor and respect the feminine when I see it in women because they've been at sea in themselves. And this is the part of the nuance of the work I do with women is to help them remember this, not from a point of view being feminine myself, although I did spend some time in the feminine, but to reflect back to them how they don't need to be in the masculine. And then I show them where they can actually own their feminine more easily. This is the challenge in this world because the world doesn't support this as a primary focus at this point. I'm holding, hoping, praying, fingers crossed that we'll get there in the future. Because frankly, without the authentic masculine, authentic feminine, the world as we know it is pretty doomed. It ain't gonna work the way we want it to. Yes, we need more women in leadership. My belief though is we need more women in feminine leadership. I believe, as I said before in broadcast years ago, a couple of years ago, how I believe the Dalai Lama didn't say something he could have said because he assumed we would know. Was where I said when he said he was in it was Vancouver. I think he was doing a talk back in two thousand six, 
back to back at, about ten years ago, he was talking about how the world, Western the world will be saved by the Western woman, and I said I said when I first heard that he missed a word, I believe because he didn't think he needed to say it. I like to think, I have no proof, but I believe what he really meant to say, or I should say what he what he said that we need to hear was the world will be saved by the Western feminine woman, and that's the piece I'm holding out for and expressing in my work and in my coaching, because I'm about saving the planet in a strange sort of way, not by planting trees. But waking women up to the feminine because the feminine energy the feminine archetype the feminine power is what's going to save our planet yes it's going to save the planet that's what i'm talking about here <laughs> so you know i'm coaching one woman at a time and i'm actually launching some programs group programs shortly because it's easy to hit easy to impact more women at once in a group than it is one on one i hope you get this message and take it to heart if you're a woman please take this to heart that being in your feminine is where your power lies when you're in your feminine, your relationships improve. Oh, let me get back to that point as well, in a moment. And men, when you're in your masculine, you stand in support of that and you stand equal to that. True equality, I believe, in the world between men and women is masculine men, feminine women. That's equality. Very different, but definitely equal. So back to relationship for a moment. I realize I skipped that part. When we men take off our masks and our shells we've been wearing as our protection all the way through the days and come back to our masculine selves which some of us have some of us when we were younger didn't understand i didn't so i understand if you didn't but when we hold that space in our masculine and when women do the same with their masks and shells come back to their feminine that's when relationships become successful i believe now relationships, relationships can be successful in a very benign and unconscious way so i'm not going to say you can't do it that way but i believe as we wake up more and more to being who we are, don't mean woke, by the way, I'm not gonna get into that conversation, but when we wake up to our true nature, men into our masculine, women into our, fe into our feminine, we create a whole new level of quality of relationship. That's the dance we're playing with, at least the dance I'm talking about here. I mean, that's why my talks are called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring the Feminine Heart. Subtle hint, you get, you get that? So my focus in my messaging is to help women remember their feminine heart and to do it from a place in my own heart, which is masculine, where I remember that and hold that more of the time than not. I'm not perfect at it, just to be clear. But the more of us who are thinking about this and focusing on this and doing something about it, the more we can change our culture and the more we can change the planet, which is kind of my um, ulterior motive. Maybe, I'm not sure. So my work in my coaching with women is to help them remember the feminine, to help them have better relationships. But the side effect, <laughs> the... Um, behind the scenes thing is that they remember the feminine everywhere not just in relationship so when I was saying about how in women you're dynamic and powerful in the world but well maybe when you're at home when you're in private you're not here's the thing when you're in your feminine you can adopt masculine practices absolutely same as when we're in a masculine we can adopt feminine practices for the function that needs to be done in the world yes but when you own your feminine ladies you can put on the suit of the masculine to do things in the world for business but you can take it off as soon as you're ready to. And the thing is, it's more about remembering you can rather than necessarily doing it all the time. It's like not, it's not to ignore that you can be, be masculine. It's remembering that you make the choice to do that and choose to come back to your feminine rather than wearing a shell that you forget you're wearing and you can't remove. So in relationships, the dance of this means that when you come home from work, from business, from the world, you get to remember how your feminine heart can be softer too or powerful as needed in that relationship. But the reality for all of us is being authentic and being transparent in the world to succeed and express ourselves fully, men as masculine, women as feminine, if that's a natural alignment, is where the transformation happens in business, in life, and at home. So I'm inviting ladies who are looking to find their way to back home to themselves, reach out to me. That's the work I do in my coaching, but it's also what I believe we can all do. We can all step back into our masculine or feminine hearts authentically, naturally, and transparently. So that's where the work is. So I'll put some links in the comments, as usual, as nudges and reminders. And by the way, if you have any comments, thoughts, questions about this topic, please put them below in the comments. I'll respond when I sign off. This is intended to be a invitation or a provocation or a challenge to where you're thinking, perhaps. And I do invite your responses. This is the work that is needed more and more on the planet. And it's what I talk about in my work because somebody's got to talk about it. And after 881 broadcasts, I think I've got something to say about this. So um, I'll tell you about the replays in a second. Before I do that, let me tell you the links I'm going to put in the comments just as reminders. Um, I will put a link for my book because I did mention my book at the top of the broadcast. And I'll also put in the comments a link to have a chat with me because if you're stuck and what's going to help, this will help you move forward. So I'll put those two links in the comments. 
Um, that'll do for now. Replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. Please come and watch me here at 5 p.m. every day, seven days a week. Um, you can find my replays on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. And you can subscribe, sorry, you can like my page on Facebook. Yeah, YouTube, yeah. Like my page on Facebook and you can watch my replay, replays there. Most of them are on there, but not all of them. Because Facebook, Facebook doesn't show all of them for some reason. However, if you go to my business page, excuse me, go to my YouTube channel, transposing there, my YouTube channel is also Barry Selby. In fact, it's youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel and you watch all of my replays in the uh, playlist called Messages from the Masculine. All of them are there. So I hope that helps you. I hope it gives you a reframe, a position of seeing things differently because frankly, if this is helping you, awesome. And let me know if it is because if this is a provoking something in you where you're challenged by it, let me know. But if it's also giving you some insight that you can go, oh, get it, now I can work with that. Let me know that as well. I thank you for watching however much of this you did watch. And if you just got here, watch from the beginning. If you're watching from the beginning, let me know. If you're watching the replay, let me know that too. I'd love to see it's getting out there. I appreciate you watching. I always invite you to take care of yourself. This is one way you can do that. So with that, I thank you for seeing, for seeing my broadcast. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, be good to yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.